So let's say we have a force which is equal to 35 newtons at an angle of 25 degrees below the horizontal. And let's say the displacement of the object is 50.0 i meters. And we're trying to figure out the work done by this constant force. F dot delta R. What's the first thing we should do with this force? Victoria. Okay, go back and look at what we just did. We used vector A and B, which was in IJ and K form, and we multiply or we did the scalar product with that. Uh, we can't quite do that. We have to do something to the force first. That we have to make the force into its component vector form. So how do I get the force into its component vector form? Remember, the force picture would look like this. This is our 35 newtons. Actually, let's do this. This is the force, and this is the angle. So what we need to get is the force in the x direction and the force in the y direction. So this force in unit vector form is that? Force x equals force uh, cosine theta. 35 cosine of 25. And we've gotten to the point where we should be able to walk through these. So this is 35 times a cosine of 25. And you said that's in the x direction, so I'll just put i. Plus, then clearly it's going to be 35 times a sine of 25j. That is our force in unit vector form. So when we're trying to figure out work equals f dot delta r, the scalar product here, the dot product, is going to be equal to what, Nick? Isn't it minus 35? Yeah. Oh, good call. It's going to be minus 35y. Because it's below. Good. Because it's below the x-axis. Great. So we have f dot delta r. Please work through this for me, Emily. Clearly the zero negates all that, but it's important to have nonetheless. Great. So if I could please have the work done by this force displacing at this point. One thousand five hundred and eighty six with six fake sixteen hundred sixteen hundred what, Andrew? Joules. Joules. Or one point six what? Uh Eugene? Oh, oh kilojoules. Kilojoules. So notice we can have kilojoules just like we can have kilonewtons and kilograms and all those various things. Great. So let's take a look at this. <coughs> Uh, take the same force and the same displacement, but let's instead look at it in, with different angles. What if the force and the displacement were in the same direction? What would F dot delta R be in that particular case, if the force and the displacement were in the same direction? So I'm just taking the same magnitude force, but I'm putting it, having it go in the same direction as the displacement. How do we figure out the work done then? Uh, it's just still F times displacement times cosine theta. Okay, F delta R cosine theta. Sure. What's the force? Uh, 35. Is that what you're saying? Right. So that's 35. Yeah. Yeah. Oh well. Well, I guess. Ah, but we can do it without unit vectors, so this is fine. So 35 times times 50 times, 50 times a cosine of zero. zero. So notice sometimes it's easy to use to not use the unit vectors, right? Because I didn't actually give a direction here, and the cosine of zero is, of course, one. What's 35 times 50, please? Uh, 
and that's in joules. Okay, what if the force and the displacement are at 90 degrees to one another? What then do we get for the work? Walk through this for me. What then do we get for the work, Travis? Um, it'll be 5 times 15 times cosine of 90, which is 0. So we get 0. So 35 times 50 times a cosine of 90, which is going to be 0. Again, going back to just the basic definition of the scalar product, Remember, it's the force multiplied by the projection of delta r on the force. Well, the projection of delta r on the force here is zero. So that's why we end up with zero work in that particular case. Great. Now, what we've just done here is basically a review of what we did last year, only adding unit vectors to it. 